So hello everyone and welcome to today's class. Today we are discussing the poison distribution and uh, the poison distribution is a, is a special case of the binomial distribution, especially when one of the conditions that we, uh, that we mentioned for the binomial distribution has been violated. And this is the condition about the, the finite size of sample or the finite number of trials. So it happens in some cases where the number of trials is either infinite, that is extremely very large, or it is unknown. Uh, if you remember, uh, in the context of binomial, we were using the combination function. And we saw that when the number of trials is very high, like a thousand, if you try a thousand, combination 200, you saw that your calculator was returning an error because of what you call computational problems. So in such cases, we switch from the binomial distribution to the Poisson distribution. So let's have a brief introduction by saying that the binomial distribution is useful in situations where the binomial distribution, the binomial distribution is useful in situations where n is finite, n is finite or known. Of course, n is uh, the number of trials. n is finite uh, or known, where n is finite or known, and we are able, and, and when we are, able to and when we are able to count the number of successes and failures so the binomial distribution is useful when n is finite and when we are able to count the number of successes number of successes and failures of course if you're able to count the number of successes and failures it means that uh, n is finite. If you are able to count the number of successes and failures, it means that n is finite. Because we know that n, the number of trials, is the same as the number of successes plus the number of failures. Number of failures. So if you know this alone and you don't know this, it means that your n is unknown or your n is infinite. Okay. So in such cases, you find that in such cases, uh, you may not be able to use the binomial distribution. Let's give an example. AG, for instance, if you are studying, if you are studying the occurrence of accidents, uh, on a busy highway, on a busy highway, it may be possible, actually it is possible, it may be possible to count, to count the number of accidents, the number of accidents that occur in a day. The, the number of accidents that occur in a day. However, however, it is not possible, however, it is not possible to count the number of times, the number of times accidents do not occur. It is not possible. Actually, sometimes it may not even make sense for you to, to say that uh, the accidents did not occur this number of times. So in such a scenario, you find that n is undefined, n is unknown, okay? So in such a case, you find that, so we say that in such cases, in cases like this, in cases like this, the binomial distribution, the binomial distribution is not useful is not useful. Why? Because n is unknown. 
n is a non, and in most of the cases you find that it is infinite. If, if it were possible for you to find out the number of times accidents did not occur, then chances are very high that it would be a very, very uh, large number, okay? So those situations now, because we are saying that the binomial distribution is not useful, those, uh, those situations now call for the use of an alternative distribution, which is called the Poisson distribution, okay? So such situations, such situations call for the use, or let's say for a switch from the binomial distribution, we switch from the binomial distribution to another distribution called the Poisson distribution. So if n is infinite or if n is unknown, then you can no longer use the binomial distribution. And that means that you use another distribution called the Poisson distribution. Okay. So now let's say that assuming, assuming a Poisson distribution or if we assume that in a given scenario, uh, our given scenario or situation follows a Poisson distribution, the probability of obtaining exactly X successes is given by, this is a formula that we use uh, for the Poisson distribution. So we, we say that probability that x is equal to that is given by e minus lambda multiplied by lambda power x divided by x factorial. So this is a formula that we use for the Poisson distribution. Later on, I'll mention that this formula here is just a special case. It's just a special case of the binomial distribution formula if you set some conditions, or if you let some, yeah, some conditions to be or to hold, okay. So where, so where, x is the number of success outcomes. X is the number of success outcomes, and the values of x, x takes uh, integers or whole numbers, zero, one, two, all the way to infinity. So for the Poisson, unlike the binomial, remember in the case of binomial, X was taking values from zero all the way to N. But in the case of Poisson, X takes the values zero all the way to infinity because N is undefined. Okay. Then uh, we, have, we have E, E is a mathematical constant uh, known as the Euler's constant. Euler is the name of a person. Huh? So Euler's constant. Some people just call it the exponential constant. The exponential constant. Okay. Okay. So this value here of uh, E is a number which is obtainable from your calculators. So if you check your calculators, you will see uh, two versions of the same. You will see e power x, or maybe sometimes they write it like this in the writer box there. And then the other version is just e like that. So this one is obtainable using the shift function. And this one is obtainable using the alpha function. So I want us to open our calculators and check if we're able to, to find the value of e uh, or to locate the value of e. So let's open our calculators. So you notice that from your calculator, you can either use the alpha function or the shift function, and the value that you will obtain will be 2.71828 ETC. That's the Euler's constant, or simply the exponential constant, okay? Then uh, we have uh, x factorial is another term that we need to explain here, x factorial. So this is read as 
x factorial and it is defined as this product. If you take x multiplied by x minus one, multiplied by x minus two, you continue like that until you reach times one. That's what we call the factorial of a number. For instance, if you have four factorial is the same as four times three times two times one, which is a 24. If you have a number like five factorial, this is five times four, times three, times two, times one, which is uh, 120, which is 120. But if you have large numbers like, like uh, 10 factorial, you find that uh, the value might be quite larger. So 10 times nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So the number will be quite large. So uh, to avoid those complications, again, we go back to the calculator. There's a function that performs factorials. Huh? It's written X with an exclamation mark like that. That's what you call the factorial function in your calculator. So please open your calculators. Let's look for X factorial. And then we can try with uh, the simple ones like this one. So you notice that you need to shift. In most of the calculators, you, you may want to, you may need to shift for you to hit this key. So for instance, if you press four, then you press this function here, you will see, you will see something like that on the screen of your calculator. Then once you press equal sign, you should be able to, to see the answer. Let me know if you're able to perform that operation using your calculator. All right, so we notice that uh, the factorial function in the calculator makes our work quite easy. And you can notice that uh, as some of you have told me uh, 10 factorial is such a number and so on and so forth. So I prefer that we be using the calculator throughout to evaluate these functions uh, like the um, factorial function and even the Euler's constant. Avoid uh, cramming this number, avoid cramming it. But it's good for you to know that it's 2.71 something. Eh? But don't try to memorize it. Just uh, always get it from your calculators. Then uh, finally, we have uh, uh, this item here we are calling lambda in the formula, lambda. So this is the parameter. This is the only parameter that is used in the Poisson distribution. If you recall, in the case of binomial, we had two parameters, n and p, or we had two items that must be there for the binomial distribution to be fully defined. N and P. For the Poisson, for the Poisson, we only need one parameter, which we are denoting here by lambda. And here we can define this as, uh, this is the mean, the mean number of successes. It is the mean number of successes. That's what we call lambda. That's what we call lambda. Sometimes we say, uh, uh, sometimes it is given as the rate of occurrence of the success outcome. For instance, in our above illustration, we can talk about uh, the number of accidents, the mean number of accidents uh, per month or per day and so on and so forth, or the number of uh, defective items uh, produced per second, or the number of typing errors uh, per page and things like that. So sometimes this lambda here will come in the form of the rate of occurrence of the success outcome. But in the real sense, it is the mean number of uh, successes for instance, if you collect data, daily data about uh, the occurrence of accidents, let's say the number of accidents that are recorded every day for a full year, then using that data, you are able to find the mean number of accidents per day. So the mean number of accidents per day will be the lambda, will be the lambda if, if the Poisson distribution is, is assumed. So that's a formula that we shall be using uh, for the Poisson distribution. So I want us to note something. I want us to note something. 
And we are going to note that the Poisson distribution, the Poisson distribution is a special case of, sometimes we say it is the limiting case, eh? is a special case of the binomial distribution, is a special case of the binomial distribution when, when n approaches infinity, that is when n is very large or unknown. When n is very large or unknown, uh, we use the, so, so the, the, the binomial distribution becomes the Poisson distribution, but there's something else. Huh? When n is very large and P approaches zero, that is, uh, P is very small. When P is very small. So actually, if you play around, if you use some algebraic techniques and you play around with the formula of the binomial distribution, when you set n to infinity or you, when you let n grow to infinity and then you let the probability of success become very small, then you end up with the formula that we have just mentioned here. You will end up with this formula. You will end up with this formula. That's why later on, we'll be approximating the binomial, uh, the binomial distribution using the Poisson distribution, okay? So let's also note that, uh, let's also note that um, the Poisson distribution, the Poisson distribution is a good approximation To, uh, is a good approximation of the binomial distribution, the binomial distribution when the above condition is met, when the above condition is met, that is when N is very large and P is very small, and also, and also when, when the mean of the binomial and also when, uh, sorry, and also when the mean of the binomial the mean of the binomial is equal approximately to the variance to the variance uh, to the variance of the same same distribution of the binomial distribution so we're saying these uh, we're saying that if you have a binomial case if you have a binomial when n is very large, p is small, and mean is approximately equal to sigma squared. When you have such a binomial scenario, then we are saying that this is approximately, this is approximately equal to the Poisson, is equal to the Poisson where the lambda which is given by np where lambda is equal to np okay so that's the scenario when uh, the binomial can be uh, properly approximated by the binomial distribution when n is very large p is very small and when the mean is equal to the variance then the binomial is approximately equal to the Poisson distribution. We shall be looking at that a little bit later. Uh, now I want us to go to the application if there's no question. Any question before you go to the application? So before we look at the application, let's also note that 
note that the Poisson distribution, the Poisson distribution, the mean is equal to the variance. For the Poisson distribution, the mean is equal to the variance. And that's why we are making, uh, we are making this condition here. When the mean is equal to the variance or very close to the, uh, is very close to the variance, then we can use uh, the Poisson because theoretically for the Poisson distribution, the mean is always equal to the variance. So let's go to the applications. So that's the question or the example that we want to look at. Suppose we collect data over a long period and observe that the mean number of accidents recorded in a certain workshop is 2.2 accidents per month. Find the probability that in this workshop, there are no accidents in a given month. There are two accidents in a given month, at least two accidents in a given month. There are three accidents in a fortnight, a two week period, or there are 30 accidents in a given year. So for the Poisson, it's good for you to note the unit of time that is used in the definition of your Lambda. It is good for you to note the unit of time that is given to define your Lambda. So for instance, if your Lambda is given as a rate per month, then if you want to calculate the rate per day or per year, you need to adjust it. You need to adjust your, your lambda, okay? So we shall see that in Roman four and five. So let's solve this question, solution. Uh, let X be the number of accidents. Let X be the number of accidents. Then let's assume Assume that X has a binomial distribution, sorry, has a Poisson distribution. Let, uh, let's assume that X has a Poisson distribution with mean, with mean number of occurrences, with mean number of occurrences, Lambda, which is equal to, and we are given that in the question. The mean number of accidents recorded is 2.2. Is 2.2 per month. 2.2 accidents per month. So let's answer question one. We're looking for the probability. We're looking for the probability that there are no accidents. Huh? The number of accidents is equal to zero. That's Roman one. So this will be given by E raised to power minus 2.2 times 2.2 power zero. Our X is zero divided by zero factorial. We know that zero factorial is one and two power zero is one also. So you're left with e raised to power minus two, two, minus 2.2. So if you simplify that, you will get point you'll get 0 0.1108, okay? Roman two, probability that we have exactly two accidents in a given month will be equal to E minus 2.2 times 2.2 .2 raised to power two divided by two factorial. Power two, divided by two factorial. 
which is 0 0.6812. Then Roman three, we are answering the question that probability that X is at least two. That means X takes the values two, three, four, all the way to infinity. And because you may not want to calculate all the values uh, from two to infinity, you use the complement rule of probability. So you have one minus probability that X is strictly less than two. And X strictly less than two means X is either zero or one. So this is same as one minus probability that x is equal to zero plus probability that x is equal to one. Already we have probability that x is equal to zero, 0 0.1108. Then we need to calculate probability that x is equal to one, which will be given by e minus 2.2 .2 times 2.2 .2 power one divided by one factorial, divided by one factorial. Anyone who has succeeded? So you get this is zero point. Point two four three eight. So the required probability that X is at least two will be one minus 0 0.1108 plus 0 0.2438, huh? 0 0.2438, which will give us 0 0.6454. Okay, then uh, question number four, the probability of getting three accidents in a fortnight, in a fortnight. Okay, so Roman four, it's good for us to note that uh, the lambda that we are given here, we are given lambda, which is 2.2 per month. So we can write this as four weeks. Then now the question is, what is the rate in two weeks time? So I need to convert that and get a new lambda here, which I'm calling lambda star. So our new lambda per fortnight will be given by this, uh, two times 2.2 .2 divided by four using cross multiplication, which will give you 1.1 accidents per fortnight. So you have 1.1 accidents per fortnight. So that is the rate that we shall use. That is the, the mean or lambda that we shall use to answer question number four. And the question is simple. Probably that X is exactly equal to three will be E raised to the power minus 1.1 1 .1 times 1.1 or three divided by three factorial. So the answer is 0 0.07. Three what? Uh, three, three, eight, four. Thank you. So that's okay. That's correct. So that's a probability of getting exactly three accidents in a fortnight. As you can see, that is a small value. Eh? Then let's look at a related question, question number five. And we are looking for the probability that we have 30 accidents in a given year, 30 accidents in a given year. So we're going to change our lambda again. So we shall have, uh, we know that 2.2 .2 is the rate for one year, uh, sorry, for one month. So we want a corresponding uh, lambda uh, for 12 months, that is uh, one year. So our lambda, uh, let's say double star here, will be equal to, times 2.2, 1. 26.4. Thank you, 26.4. Accidents yeah. per year. So the rate must be uh, resonating with the question, huh? especially the, the part on the, the, the unit of time. So now we go to the question. We are looking for the probability 
that the number of accidents is 30 per year. So this will be E raised to the power minus 26.4 times 26.4 raised to power 30 divided by 30 factorial. So someone uh, get the answer for us. Zero point zero five seven four. Zero point zero five seven four. Uh, point zero five seven four. Thank you. So, as you can see, uh, it is quite easy to compute the probabilities. It is quite easy to compute the probabilities. So now let's look at the Poisson approximation to the binomial distribution. So, in this uh, subtopic, you want to show that. Sometimes the Poisson distribution can give a very good approximations to a binomial distribution, okay? So then we note that uh, this might be a repetition. We say that the Poisson distribution, the Poisson distribution is a good approximation to a binomial distribution, to a binomial distribution when uh, n is very large and p is very small and also when the mean is approximately equal to the variance. So if you have a binomial scenario where the mean is approximately equal to the variance and n is large and p is very small, then you can comfortably use a Poisson distribution to estimate the binomial distribution. For instance, consider a binomial scenario, consider a binomial case where n is 100 and p is 0 0.01, okay? So you notice that, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll be illustrating the, this part, huh? you notice that you notice that mean, which is for the binomial distribution mean is given by n times p, will be 100 times 0 0.01, which is one. Okay. Then uh, what about the variance? Variance in that case, sigma squared is given by npq. So this is 100 times 0 0.01, times 0 0.99. And you will find that the answer is 0 0.99, which is very close to one, which is very close to one. So you notice that in this scenario, so they are very close. Huh? So we say that these are approximately equal. This is a good scenario where we can use the Poisson distribution to estimate the probabilities of a binomial uh, situation. So I want us to have an example, an illustration actually. So let's create a table here where on one side we have the possible values of X, consider zero, one, two, three, four, five. And then this is a binomial. This is binomial where n is 100 and p is 0 0.01. So a corresponding Poisson distribution for that binomial uh, situation will be Poisson where lambda, remember lambda is the mean number of uh, successes. So the mean will be equivalent to the mean of the binomial distribution, which is given by NP. And N is 100 and P is 0 0.01. So this will be equal to one. So those two scenarios uh, are coming from the same, uh, or those two distributions are coming from the same situation. When N is 100 and P is 0 0.01, the corresponding Poisson will have lambda is equal to one. And one is given by N times P, by N times P. So I want us to calculate the probabilities for the different values of X 
and the two uh, uh, distributions. So let's start with the binomial distribution. Probability that X is equal to zero, which will be 100, choose zero times 0 0.01 over zero times 0 0.99 power 100. So let's get that probability value. And somebody else to do probability that X is equal to one will be equal to 100, choose one times 0 0.01 times 0 0.99 power 99. And somebody has to be doing the others. It is 100 choose two times 0 0.01 power two times 0 0.99 power 98 ETC. So let's, let's get the probabilities for the binomial situation. So let's get the values of the probabilities. We have already gotten the first few ones. So when X is equal to four. X is equal to four, zero, zero. point. Uh -huh. Zero point zero one five zero. Zero one five zero, is that correct? Zero. Someone else, what are you getting? 0 0.0150. 0 0.0149. I think 49 is more accurate. Huh? And the last one we can have 0 0.00289. 00289. 29, yeah. Yeah, then let's get the ones for the Poisson distribution. So we need from x is equal to zero for the Poisson, we'll have e raised to the power minus one times one raised to the power zero, zero factorial. So we have uh, four minus one. We get zero point that's six, seven, nine, seven, nine. Uh, when x is one, when x is one, we get e minus that is one time. E minus red. So it remains the same as this, huh? That's six, seven, nine. So when in the position and x, just when x is a uh, two, we get zero point eighteen thirty nine. Huh? When x is three. Zero point zero six one three. When X is four, zero point zero one five three. And finally, when X is five. Zero point zero. Uh, how many zeros? Zero. And then we have uh, three zero six, three zero seven, something like that. So those are the probabilities when you use the two distributions. If you assume the Poisson distribution, if you assume the binomial distribution. So remember, we are trying to check whether the Poisson distribution will give us almost the same probabilities as the binomial uh, distribution in such a situation. So maybe to see it more clearly, uh, let's round off to the nearest uh, two decimal places. So this will be very close to 0 0.37, 0 0.38, 0 0.39, 0 0.40, 0 0.41, 0 0.42, 0 0.43, 0 0.44, 0 0.45, 0 0.46, 0 0.47, 0 0.48, 0 0.49, 0 0.50
this is 0.37 also. This is, uh, let's say very close to 0 0.19. Yeah, if I round over, uh, then this one be very close to 0 0.1. This is uh, 0, point, 0 point, let's say 0 0.2. And this will be 0 0.003. Then here, this will be 0 0.37, the same as this. This, is, this will remain as 0 0.18. This will be 0 0.1, if you round it off. And this will be approximately 0 0.1. 0 0.2 and this will be around 0 0.003. So you notice that the two distributions will give us almost the same values. Huh? If you take, of course, there are some slight differences, but you can see that the Poisson has done a very good approximation to the binomial distribution. So if you draw the graphs corresponding to these probability values, you will get a graph which is almost the same for the two distributions, almost the same for the two distributions. So that is, a, so let me say that, that uh, this illustration, this illustration has shown that the Poisson distribution Is a good is a good approximation to the binomial distribution in some circumstances. Not all of them. Not all the circumstances. In some circumstances, the circumstances are when n is large, when p is small. And when the probability of, uh, sorry, and when the mean of the binomial distribution is very close to the, to the variance of the binomial distribution. When the mean and variance are very close in the context of binomial distribution, then you can switch to the Poisson distribution. You can switch to the Poisson distribution. Any question?